<sighs> Anti WEF. Episode 421, Soul Not For Sale podcast. Joe Rogan, Ice Cube. They've done an interview together. This was a great podcast. Now, let me give you a little background about Ice Cube. Ice Cube over the pandemic was offered a role in a movie, and he refused to do it because the studio said that he needed to have a procedure done. That good old, you know, 2020 procedure. He wasn't into it. He refused. And ever since then, every interview and podcast he's done, he's been very outspoken in the most subtle way. It seems like he's very aware and awake to what's going on in the world, but he doesn't want to just outright blurt it out because right now he owns a basketball league called the Big Three. So he's a spokesman at the same time. So he doesn't want to exactly go out. He doesn't want to go all out. He doesn't want to go full Tucker. He doesn't want to go full Rogan. He's a businessman. He's trying to get things done, but he has to bite his tongue, it seems. And in this clip, he unintentionally or intentionally uncovers something very, very big. Nobody's talking about this. It has to do with the ESG, the scoring system that corporations have to abide by nowadays, and the scoring system that puts impact above money. And the impact has to be embracing whatever agenda has been being pushed on the masses. And if you're not a part of that, as as per Larry Fink's Larry Fink of Black, BlackRock, as of what he said, as per his words, we have to force behavior. So with forcing behavior comes the ESG score, which is basically a corporation's social credit system. Ice Cube uncovers something very interesting in this clip. Very, very interesting. Just got to show you the Soul Not For Sale store. You guys know all about it. Let me hit view all here. We got hoodies. We got shirts, T-shirts, women's sizes, mugs, children's sizes, and tank tops for men and women. That website is IamCoachCollin.com. Website again, IamCoachCollin.com. And discount code 10% off. I am Coach Colin, all one word, all capital letters, one L in the Colin. That will get you 10% off anything you purchase and in this store. And just to quickly show you, this is the newest design. It's the Great Resist. Don't be a part of the Great Reset. Be a part of the Great Resist instead. And if you've purchased anything from our website, thank you so much. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now let's get into this clip. Very, very interesting thought process Ice Cube has in this. And we're going to break it all down as soon as he's done talking about it. Let's go. Who was. Oh, I just have to say right now they're talking about corporations. He's talking about somebody blowing out their shoulder and he's using a corporation doing, you know, woke agenda stuff and uh, kind of going broke comparing it to somebody blowing out their shoulder while doing a bench press in the sense of if you've already hurt yourself once, like how much do you need? How much weight do you need to put on the bench? How much does a company really need in terms of money? That's what he's talking about right now. Let's get into it. Maxing out, you know, bench pressing or whatever and blew out a shoulder. Like bunch times. Like, it's like you was maxed out. The last time you maxed out, why are you trying to max out even more and more and more and more? And then you blow out your shoulder. You see what I'm saying? So at a certain point, you got to know when you got enough of this and enough of that. <clears throat> I think the money people, though, they never think that way because it's all about numbers. Like the whole thing is numbers. It's not like, look, I put out a new album. Look, I put out a new movie. I'm, I'm creating a thing. I'm putting together stuff. For them, it's always numbers. It's all numbers. It's just numbers. And so you never feel satisfied. And there's always a guy with a bigger jet. There's always a guy with a bigger house. There's always a guy with more of this, more of that. And yeah. Yeah. And usually, you know, you can find happier people with way 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 less way less <laughs> yes way less yeah if your goal is happy that is not the occupation you should be in that's not no. yeah those people are miserable yeah and they're always chasing and they're never satisfied you know that to me is torture in itself 
Well, it's also stupid. And if and if you're running a corporation, it's actually your obligation. Your obligation to your shareholders is to continue to make as much money as possible. So you're trapped in a system that obligates you to behave and think that way. And if you don't, you won't be competitive. Yeah. It's a uh, it's an ugly game, you know, and and I don't see where where people are being thought about in these type of situations you know it's no. all about you know capital don't care yeah capital has no emotions capital only respects capital yeah the only time it respects people's opinions is when people boycott shit and it works like this bud light thing yeah then and now people are like don't do that again yeah like be careful because look what yeah. happened to bud light well who controls bud light that's the question. Why would they make a dumb decision like that? Are they trying to ruin Bud Light? And why would they want to ruin Bud Light? Are they trying to take down some of our most iconic American brands? And why would that help? I don't think them? they were trying to. I don't think they had any idea this was going to happen. It's this uh, ESG thing that everybody has to dedicate a certain amount of their time to, you know, woke stuff. Who who man who mandates that? It's a good question. Where does the ESG money come from? Is that uh, government? Like, where does that come from? And it's they, they have. Just real quick, it's BlackRock, and uh, Jamie doesn't pull anything up for him in regards to where it comes from. He doesn't say anything. Odd. Scores, and the, the ESG score of your corporation determines what you get. And the problem is also you get these people that are coming out of college, like this this lady who made the decision for Bud Light. You know, she's gone through the university system, she's in the corporate system, and she's a woman, and she thinks, you know, we have to be more inclusive, and that's all the language everyone's using today. Yeah. And so they don't know any real people. They don't know regular people. They mm -hmm. have no idea that if you take a brand, Bud Light, which is, like, known for, you know, blue-collar drinking people, that yeah. they, they like to fucking watch football and drink Bud Light, and then all of a sudden you have this mentally ill person who's just an attention whore and you make a big deal out of putting this person 365 days of womanhood you put that on a bud light can and they freak the fuck out yeah and then kid rock shoots a bunch of them and then it's on once kid rock shoots your cans you got real problems yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure you do uh yeah man it's kind of like i think you gotta you gotta still ask why like what you think what? there's like a, a conspiracy well you know who's getting hurt who's getting hurt in this whole thing is it the bud light um anheuser-busch brass are, are they are will their bonuses be affected will their checks and salaries be affected you got this lower level person fired and a bunch of middle class guys are paying the price because you got distribution centers, you know, mm -hmm. the guys that deliver the beer nobody want, and now they're out of a job. Now you're really attacking the middle class mm -hmm. um, by by making a brand that's so big um, take a hit like that. You it know, says, um, yeah, the quickest destruction of a company in history. Bud Light sponsors Toronto Pride Parade. <laughs> so, you know, it's... Um, <laughs> Oh, there's a, when was this? That, that was, was just the other day. Yeah. <laughs> See what I mean? This is this this is the thing that I've never I've never thought of, right? You you make this whole stance, and the company gets boycotted. They lose thirty billion dollars. This is in regards to Bud Light, but Bud Light's just fine. They're still ranked the number one beer in the world. After losing thirty billion, that's how far ahead they were. Actually, I shouldn't say after losing thirty billion. I heard this at about twenty billion, so maybe thirty has knocked them down a peg. Maybe, but even still, after losing all of that money, they're still ranked number one. Even though everything you've seen happen has happened, they're still number one. Those people's checks, just like Ice Cube just said. Their checks at the very top are unaffected. Their checks and their bonuses are unaffected by all of this. But who's really getting hurt? The, the people, well, I mean, you go right down to the end user. You know, guys have gotten into fights. 
I've heard here and there people getting into fights because they order a Bud Light, some guy makes fun of them, they get into a scrap, blah, blah, blah. But Ice Cube brought up something that I never thought of. The guys in the distribution centers. What if someone in the distribution center, people running it, were like, we have to let some people go? Well, sorry, guys, we have to let a bunch of people go. We just lost $30 billion. We're still number one. We're still fine. But maybe they did have to let some people go. I don't actually know this, but it's just an interesting way of looking at it. You're you're shooting up high at the top, the top of the mountain, the top of Bud Light. You're saying, hey, we're going to boycott you because of what you've done. And then they lose a bunch of money. And then... You think you're attacking the CEO. You think you're attacking the president. But in reality, you're only hurting the people who are exactly like you. Bud Light, their main main, uh, demographic is the frat guys. You know, on the, you know, like it or not, even people in high school, frat people, you know, older university people, people out of universities, single Uh, I shouldn't say single dads, but dads, moms, you know, you want to have a barbecue. It's Canada Day. It's Independence Day. It's the it's Memorial Day. All these people who are just regular working people, they're opening up Bud Lights. Those are the same people, same class of people who are working in the distribution centers. So you feel like you're attacking this corporation, but really you're just attacking the middle class. And it's a very interesting thing to think about. Obviously, I don't know if this is true, but it, it's it's very interesting to think this could be a tactic for the middle class to continue to stomp itself out unknowingly. I don't know. Very. I've never heard it. I've never heard anybody bring that part up. Like, who's it hurting? The people in the distribution centers. The the bar that just bought like a whole bunch of Bud Light that they can't sell now. You know, vendors. You know, I, I already said restaurant owners. Right? It's it's hurting the people who are already in the middle. It's like, you know, and I, CEO of CEO of uh the company is actually a CIA operative, ex CIA operative you know, X, but you never really leave kind of thing. It's it's a very smart tactic. If you wanted to hurt the middle class, and it seems like over the past four years, five years, six years, there has been an attack on the middle class. Middle class white men, middle class black men, middle class men in general. The working class man has been under attack for his masculinity, for his misogyny, for his sexism, for his this, for his existence. This would be an interesting way of accomplishing something like that. I don't know. I don't know, but it's a very, very interesting, very interesting that Ice Cube brought this up. I'm telling you, if you haven't watched anything with Ice Cube getting interviewed, he touches on the black community being brainwashed by the Democratic Party in a couple of interviews I've seen. He touches on things like this. He he want he uses his words really well and he doesn't come right out and say things, but you can tell he's very aware of what's going on in the world. A little a little more than Joe is right now. Like he's asking the question why and he wants to delve into it. But Joe is uh, is not biting or just doesn't see it. He's already come to his conclusion of how this actually happened. Um, but I think Ice Cube's way of thinking is actually very interesting. I'm going to play a little bit more of this clip. Oh, this is so silly. <laughs> They're leaning into it. Like, but why meanwhile, would you... the gays are mad at him. The, the pride people are mad at him because they didn't support Dylan Mulvaney. So they, they, <laughs> they like kicked it they out don't of gay win. bars. You don't win you know, either way yeah. at the end of the day. But... Um, you know, I, I think about the companies that own these companies, the people that own these companies, and why would they let a decision like that take the company down? I don't think they thought it was going to. I think this is a legitimate public outrage one where they just pushed too far and people went, fuck you. And it wasn't even like a real like promotion. It was a thing they sent a can to this person, this Dylan Mulvaney person. But I don't think 
it went anywhere else. I think it was just like, here, this is for you, and you put it on social media. They made some sort of a partnering deal, mm -hmm. you know, and that was it. So why Target do the same thing? Well, I think that's an ESG thing. That's an ESG thing, right? And Target lost billions of dollars too, because people yeah. people are sick of this shit. They're sick of social things like that that are controversial getting stuffed into your face, and where you have to accept it. Yeah. And people are like, I don't want to accept it. It's just like I'm just coming here for fucking toilet paper. Yeah, I think you know, people got to keep it in perspective as well too. You know, I don't think people grab a beer to be so. I mean, to to, to you know to learn about the newest social of right. it or the social situation going out right. grab a beer because you want a beer hang with your buddies or hang you know yeah. with people that enjoy beer and y'all uh, shoot the shit and politics really shouldn't be in somebody's <laughs> beer mug you know they just don't get it they think it has to be in everything everybody because of social media everybody feels like they're fighting some sort of social battle with everything they do and yeah. you know and this is one this is another one. It's like it's like forced compliance. You have to you're forced to comply with this. And you know, it's fucking up women's sports in a huge way, in a huge way. And you know, some organizations are, are pushing back against that and some people are pushing back against the organizations that are pushing back against. Very good segue. Joe is a master in conversation. Right now he's segueing to the trans debates of uh you know, trans women in women's sports, which is pretty smart if you want to trail off of this topic. And obviously you don't want to, you just want to be free to talk. You don't want to have to be boxed into any one conversation. So it makes sense. Here's the thing though. I think they're both right when it comes to this whole thing. People are done with it. They, they get outraged. But also when you look at Bud Light, when you look at Target, when you look at these massive corporations, they understand their customer. They understand people who are potential customers. They know their demographics. They know the age, especially with data and like accruing data over the years. They have they know exactly what their audience looks like. They have no question of what their audience looks like. So when Ice Cube poses that question of like, why, why would why would Target do the same thing? It's like, it could be an ESG thing and they feel like they have to show that social impact. You know, they're an ally to to black people, LGBTQ and all that stuff. It, it could be that. But then also they could look at it and go, well, like they could easily find out the information of who is interested in this topic in our community in or in, in our demographic, in our customer base. Who's interested in this? You know, who's the buyer? Just go to Bud Light. Who's the buyer of the beer? Well, it's for sure the man of the house. For sure. If you're buying a 2-4 beer, you don't send your wife to get a 2-4 beer. Your wife has to carry that thing. You don't send your wife to get three 2-4s of beer. That's insane. You go and get it yourself. You and your buddy go and get it. Right? Your wife's doing things in the house traditionally. You know, maybe she's handling the kids, this, that. She has other things to do other than carry things that are 20 pounds a piece, uh, 30, 20, 30 pounds a piece, right? So they know that. They have a marketing team. They have an advertising team. They have people who analyze the purchases and, and who's coming in and out of stores. They know how many people come in and out of a store that carries their brand of beer. They understand all of that. I don't know. It's really weird. Why would they do that? They have the information to know that it was a bad idea, yet they still went through with it. I don't know. And same thing with Target. Think about what you've seen with Target. I've seen um, Republican Barbie. She was one of the first people to do it. She went into a Target. She wanted to understand why this display is right here for everyone to see. She wanted to understand what was the purpose of this. She wanted to know where the straight clothing was. But who did she have to ask? The CEO of Target was there. <laughs> no, obviously not. CEO, CEO of Target is not inside every Target. Probably never inside any of them, to be honest. Right? Not even the district manager. She had to ask a regular middle class person working a job in retail. And she herself is middle class. It's like their decision 
made it so the middle class people who work in Target and who were customers of Target had to clash. And then all of a sudden, if Target takes this big hit and they have to close down a bunch of stores, you know, they take a huge hit. Who knows how how deep this will go, if it'll continue. What if they have to get rid of a bunch of people? Now, why would that be a problem? Now, here's the thing. It could be, you know, these companies and all these people lose all this money. They have to get rid of employees. That's more people who are unemployed. Why would a company just want to make people unemployed? You know, this is not like, you know, evil villain Gotham City stuff. But maybe it gives way for them to have more self-checkouts. Yeah, we just lost all these people. That actually makes sense. You know, since the boycotts, we've had to install. It's not our fault. It's actually the boycott that made it so we had to get all self-checkout. Yeah, we don't have any more cashiers. That's over. It's because of the boycott. It's not because of us. We didn't make that decision. We just, we had to get rid of people. and We had no one to fill the, the registers. I don't know. That could be a thing. Distribution centers. Well, we had to get rid of 10,000 people in the distribution centers. But we couldn't stop distributing, so we took what those salaries would be, and we spent half of that money on this new conveyor belt system that's completely machine-operated. Oh, I don't know. I don't know any of that for fact, but it's just an interesting thing to look at. And interesting for you to think about. When you boycott something, and you, and you still have the right to do it, and you should if you feel to. You definitely should. I don't like shopping at grocery stores that have self-checkout. If I find one that doesn't, I'm going there and there only. In fact, I'll go to a farm. I got farms nearby. I'll go to a farm for what I can, you know? So so do it if you have to. If you feel like you have to, still boycott things. But you have to think about who are you actually affecting when you do that. And is it possible to potentially affect the people who you really want to feel it? with your boycott and if so how i don't know like the video it helps so much you have no idea boosts us out of the shadow realm especially with conversations like this uh, <laughs> and other than that i am out